Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and deceased. It is I, Emily Sophia, here to break down for you guys two new Walking Dead trailers from San Diego Comic Con. We're going to talk about the Walking Dead Season 6 official trailer that just recently dropped, as well as the trailer for Fear the Walking Dead, which is going to be the new installment in Robert Kirkman's Walking Dead universe. So, I was going to say spoiler alert because that's normally my standard practice with my vlogs, but I don't know how much I really can spoil for you guys. I haven't read that far into the comics as far as the main Walking Dead stories, so you shouldn't worry about any such things with this video. Um, but yeah, so let us talk first about the season 6 trailer for The Walking Dead. I'm going to go through that in as much detail as I possibly can, and I'm going to discuss more the premise of Fear the Walking Dead based on what we got to see in the trailer for that. So, season six, here we go. Now, something to bear in mind, and this is something that I have to remind myself of in constant whenever I am watching trailers, teasers, previews, sneak peeks, whatever synonyms you wanna throw out there, they are misleading. They are inherently manipulative with the way that scenes are cut and juxtaposed. You will think that a certain conversation between characters is being had when in fact what someone is saying might be directed to an entirely different character. The thing is we don't have the full context. And I used to fall so hard for the tricks and shenanigans pulled in trailers for, you know, things like Dexter back in the day when I was just recently getting into watching television in general, finally having finished marathoning shows and stuff like that, and being caught up in watching trailers as I went. Don't believe everything you see because the context is very purposefully obscured. And so the season six trailer appears to be setting us up for a major conflict and falling out between Rick and Morgan. Morgan having just shown up at the very end of season five after Rick just got, got mm, words are not, not working at the moment. Rick just got done teaching the residents of Alexandria a lesson about reality. <laughs> and Morgan came at the very tail end of his bloody little demonstration of what the world has become. And arguably, Morgan is himself an extreme survivalist. And as he states in, in the trailer, now I think that the, the very first bit of dialogue that we get in the season six trailer, I think is drawn from season three, actually. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's the dialogue from, from the episode clear, if I'm not mistaken. It was season three. It was the last time that Rick and Morgan met up. Now, I might be completely wrong, and y'all can tell me down below if I am, but you know what Rick says is, we both started off in the same place, but you can come back from this. I know you can. Um, and then what we hear from Morgan is, good people, they always die. I'm a killer Rick, and you are too. That just smacks so much of season three in that encounter that we got to see that, and we didn't actually see them like speaking it, in the trailer, so it strikes me as kind of a flashback moment. I don't know. However, I don't think that all is as it seems with what was building up in the trailer, with Morgan seemingly assuming more control over Alexandria and threatening Rick. I don't necessarily think that's going to happen at all. Now, granted, I have not read the comics, I don't know anything in that front. I Well, I've read up until the point where they're at the prison getting established there. So I'm not very far into the story. Um, so I can't really provide any insights or speculations in that regard. All I can deal with is what we see. And a lot of the conversations that are had between Rick and 
Morgan in the trailer, we don't actually necessarily see the both of them in the same scene a lot of the time. So at the point where Rick is like, you really think you're going to take this community from us, from from Daryl, and then cut to a cool shot of Daryl, from Michonne, and then cut to a cool shot of Michonne, from Glenn, and then cut to a cool shot of Glenn, from me, and all, all that jazz, and like the, do you have any idea who you're talking to, and the, you know, gun to the head. We don't even see Morgan in that instance. So this might be somebody completely different, and they want us to think that it's Rick versus Morgan. Granted, I could definitely see their arising some friction between them since Rick has demonstrated full well that he does not give two Fs about what you think. Like, th this is my family. This is my core group. We are going to try to equip the people around us with the skills to survive, but ultimately we serve our family. This is what we do. We endure. We press on. Anybody who is going to try to deny the way the world is so long and adios. You know, that's sort of the Rick that we are seeing now. And I love him as a main character. I love him. I love Morgan. It's the best bo the best of both worlds getting to see them come together, although we don't know exactly what's going to transpire as the political leadership structure at Alexandria is pretty much turned on end. Because Deanna, who's been leading this community and has refused to kill, even when probably necessary, um, she sees that Yes, this is indeed a very different world at hand than the one that we have had w within our walls. And knowing that they're vulnerable to the world outside changes the way that everyone in Alexandria goes about life. The way that everyone regards their fellow peers, their fellow citizens, the way, I mean, it, it changes the nature of everything. So I'm very much excited for this season, and I think that we do get a good little taste of the insanity to come in this trailer. But bear in mind that the central conflicts between groups, between individual characters, is not outright exposed in this trailer. I'm just going to put that out there. Um, and so we, we do see some conversations between Rick and Morgan that I think do actually take place. Like when Rick is saying that he doesn't take chances anymore and Morgan says, and you shouldn't. So they're kind of of one accord on that note. Um, and then there's, there's a point at which Rick is addressing the Alexandrian community saying, we're going to make this work, keep this place safe, keep our families safe. And then one guy goes, so we're all supposed to just fall in line behind you, yada, yada, yada. So we knew that this was going to be a problem as he just traumatized the crap out of these very sheltered people. Um, but uh, at one point somebody says, how many more of us have to die before we do something? I couldn't exactly recognize who, whose voice that was. It could just be some random person in Alexandria realizing... A, they need to step up their game and get with the program, or B, they don't like the way that Rick and or Morgan and or Deanna are leading and they're, you know, going to <laughs> start an uprising. See, there's so, there's more questions that are raised in this trailer than answers given, but I think that's great. And it, it will just be fun to see how everything plays out. You can, as much as I get excited about new trailers, it's important to take what's being conveyed with a grain of salt because of the manipulation piece, because it's a, it's a means of marketing, of getting that hype train rolling down the tracks without necessarily revealing all. So that's, that's kind of my general, the consensus of my thoughts at this point. Um, but yeah, so we see that at one point Deanna tries to get the community to rally around Morgan, it looks like, with the way that, you know, she's saying that we're all going to trust him, he's been out there, he knows what he's doing. That could also apply to Rick, but those shots are juxtaposed with Morgan in such a way that I think they're talking about him. See, see just how ridiculous this gets? How much room for doubt there is? It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. And thus, I'm sitting here like, this doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Maybe I'm just the great skeptic. Maybe I am endeavoring to deny what is right before my eyes, but I don't care. <laughs> this is just what I think. You can... I'm, I think that it is perfectly fine to take the material as they deliver it to us and say, like, oh, wow, so Morgan's going to try to boot these guys out. Like, that is an interpretation that you're totally entitled to have. I don't believe it at all. <laughs> That's just me. Um, yeah, because, and there is one point where Morgan's like, you get the hell out of here and you don't ever come back. Who is he talking to? See, it's all of these pronouns that are, are placed throughout and they don't indicate who we're even dealing with. Um, it's safe to speculate. I mean, this, this is the point at which you can, whatever you think might be within the realm of possibility, get it out there, you know? But, um, yeah, I do so very much love the, the militant, like, half-crazy Rick that we got to see emerge over the course of the, um, latter half of season five. I, I so very much love that side of him. I love him as a leading character as well. He's the one that we've kind of been made to identify with the most. I mean, for all of the memes that have have come from his character, his accent, all, all the other silliness and things that we've gotten to enjoy, Andrew Lincoln is a reckoning force. He embodies this character so well, and I will follow Rick Grimes into the dark. I have also officially nicknamed him the Grime Reaper, so I might be busting that one out in my forthcoming Walking Dead reviews. But yeah, so we also get to see that Jesse, um, Rick's kind of lady love figure, whose husband was an asshole, she is trying to hold the line and appears to be getting with the program <laughs> that Rick has laid forth. Um, at one point, I think Glenn is telling Maggie that she has to look out for someone. And it's hard to say who exactly that's going to be. Um, yeah, but we, we kind of get to touch base generally with everybody. There are still walkers in the world and interesting forms of them, such as a tree walker at one point that we see in the woods. Also, it appears that Daryl is with the wolves towards the end there. I don't really know anything about him other than that... Um, I can see a bad moon rising. I can see trouble on the way. They used that song actually in the marketing for the last season, which I loved. So it's like every time I hear the song on the radio, like, I can see the bad moon rising. Do, 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 do. I see trouble on the way. Like, I think of that really, the, the eerie minor key version that they used for the last season. And that was so awesome and love that. But yeah, so basically, get ready for yet another new era in the world of The Walking Dead. Um, treat all of the the teaser trailers and this trailer in specific with, with a healthy dose of skepticism and question what you're seeing because this doesn't answer anything yet. Nothing is laid in stone here, so just be keeping that in mind. And, and it's footage that's all coming from the first couple of episodes anyway, so there's that. Now, I'm going to very briefly talk about the premise of Fear the Walking Dead as well, as promised by the title of this video. Um, so I watched the trailer. I'm not going to do a scene-by-scene -scene analysis of it per se. It's about three or four minutes long, and there's a lot of material inside that we can look at. However, the thing that is fundamentally different about Fear the Walking Dead is not only the geographic location, we are switching from east coast to west, but also the fact that we are picking up the baton at a much earlier point in the infection stage. We actually get to see life as it was before civilization ended, you know. Um, and although in the trailer they say that, like, when civilization ends, it ends fast, or I, I forget what the exact quote is, I'm definitely paraphrasing it, but <laughs> I, I certainly hope it doesn't end too fast, because I think that this is very ripe territory to explore the world as we know it, and then watching that slip in a very organic way through the eyes of these characters who have no idea what's going on. Yes, they've got their smartphones and internet and they can keep up with the, the stories that are, you know, relaying all of these 
scary events, but it's still it's still life. People trying to cling to to their ways, social standards and settings and school and work and all, all that good stuff. So we only really get tidbits of that as far as The Walking Dead is concerned in the forms of flashbacks because where the show actually picks up is with Rick Grimes having been in a coma. And he comes into this world. He is sort of a vehicle for our own perception. He is, is just as oblivious to the way the world has become as we are, except for the fact that we're on the outside and know the premise of the zombie apocalypse that's at hand. Still, it's all, it's all very fresh to Rick, but to the rest of the world, this has been the way of it for weeks. That's not the way that Fear the Walking Dead is approaching things, and for as much as I'm bummed that the title of the show is so close to its predecessor, I get that they're doing that such that people will be like, oh, The Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead, they know that the two go together. It sort of helps transfer one audience to the other, um, if that makes sense. But it makes sense that, that they might call it Fear the Walking Dead because we really get to see the growth of fear in, in this particular community. Now, I can't really say anything about the characters yet. They're all original creations at this point, and it's probably going to be annoying having to deal with teenagers and such, but ain't that the truth, truth of life? Like, they're pretty much always annoying. Sorry if you're a teenager, it's okay. But uh, yeah, so I'm interested, I'm intrigued for sure. Um, now the, the thing that's kind of strange is the fact that it's, the story appears to be set in our time. Not the beginning of The Walking Dead that was like six years ago at least, you know. Um, or well, actually, when does it, when do the comics say that this starts? Like, what is the year even supposed to be? I mean, dates and times are not very readily available information in the Walking Dead universe, but it is kind of strange to see kids, like, with their phones and the, the technology piece. I think that that's something that's all too easily bungled or relied upon in an awkward way in television and movies, mostly because the technology that's employed is either, it's either futuristic or you can tell that like they're, they're trying to use modern technology, but they're still using like flip phones, stuff like that. Um, it looks like they're using our technology though. So that's kind of a different aesthetic and it's something that I think we're going to watch start slipping away as the virus spreads and uh, stuff hits the fan. But yeah, I, I think that this is going to be very different from The Walking Dead in terms of the setting, in terms of just the, the progression. And so it's not just all of these established groups as we have been finding in The Walking Dead, um, whether Alexandria or Woodbury or what have you. We get to see how these people adapt in real time as things are progressing. And I think that that's going to be super exciting to see. And I hope that all of you will keep your minds open to that kind of stuff. It's going to be cool to watch. And I'll definitely be reviewing both The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead for you guys. However, I shall be gone for two weeks in September. September 2nd through the 16th, I'm going to be in Italy, so I'm not going to be able to watch Fear the Walking Dead while I'm gone, and I'll do my best to keep up with my reviews after that, but just bear that in mind. So, yeah, that's my very general, surfacey impressions so far. We don't really know much, but the premise of it I find to be very ripe for fresh and creative storytelling. I trust Robert Kirkman and his crew and am very much looking forward to all of the deadness that is to come. So thank you guys so much for watching this review. Leave all of your thoughts and of course if you're delving into any spoilery things in the Walking Dead comics do preface those comments, but leave them below, you know? 
for the other people who have seen that stuff and want to talk and talk about my review. Whatever. So, yeah. Thank you guys very, very much. I'm still doing True Detective and Hannibal. Hoping to take on some more content in the future. And as always, I'll be back before you 